we've just crossed a threshold and you fail to anticipate just how unpredictable they are. The world is finally waking up to what's coming with agentic AI. And honestly, it's about time. It might be one of the most critical conversations about artificial intelligence we've seen all year. The lineup, heavyweight thinkers, Amjad Mossad, CEO of Repli, Brett Weinstein, evolutionary biologist and deep systems thinker, and Daniel Priestley, award-winning entrepreneur and best-selling author. But before we jump in, smash that like button and subscribe. You don't want to miss this. Let's break it down. The conversation starts by setting the stage. Where is AI headed? What does the rise of agentic AI really mean? And how might this reshape our world? You'll see the full clips in a moment, but here's your cheat sheet. Brett Weinstein takes the role of the cautious realist. He's not necessarily anti-AI, but he sees the risks clearly and unflinchingly. Amjad Mossad, on the other hand, is the AI optimist. As the CEO of Repli, he's bullish on how AI agents will empower startups, solopreneurs, and disruptors. Daniel Priestley lands somewhere in the middle. He's excited about the massive productivity gains AI could unlock, but also deeply worried about the human cost, especially when it comes to jobs and inequality. With that setup, here's the first explosive moment. Host Stephen Bartlett turns to Amjad and asks the question on everyone's mind. What jobs is AI actually going to replace? Let's take a look. You know, maybe this is useful for, for the audience. I think if your job is as routine as it comes, your job is gone in the next uh, couple of years. So meaning if you, if, in, in those jobs, like for example, uh, quality assurance jobs, data entry jobs, you're, you're sitting in front of a computer and you're supposed to click uh, and, and type things in a certain order, Operator and those technologies are coming on the market really quickly, and those are going to displace a lot of, a lot of uh, labor. Accountants, accountants, lawyers. Uh, yes, I, I mean I've just pulled a ligament in my in my foot, and they did an MRI scan, and I had to wait a couple of days for someone to look at the MRI scan and tell me what it meant. Yeah, I'm guessing that that's gone. Yeah, uh, I think I think the healthcare ecosystem is hard to predict because of regulation. And, and again, there, there's so many limiting factors on how this technology can permeate the economy because of regulations and, and people's willingness to, to take it. But, you know, things, unregulated jobs uh, that are purely text in, text out. If your job, you know, you get, a, you get a message and you produce some kind of artifact that's like probably text or images, that, that job is, is at risk. So what kind of jobs are under immediate threat? Simple text-in, text-out roles. These are the entry-level white-collar jobs that involve predictable tasks, customer service, data entry, copywriting, document review. Work that's easy to verify, doesn't require deep creativity or complex decision-making, and can now be done faster, cheaper, and more accurately by AI. We're talking about at least a third of today's white-collar workforce, especially those entry-level positions that serve as the first rung on the career ladder. And here, why that's terrifying, AI isn't coming for the top down. It's not targeting CEOs or executives first. It's coming from the bottom up. It's starting with the easiest tasks, the ones that millions of people rely on to get their foot in the door. And that creates a huge problem. Because here's the harsh truth. When these roles start disappearing, and they already are, most of the people currently doing them won't have the skills, the time, or the support system to quickly move into higher value jobs. So what happens when AI wipes out millions of these roles? What happens when there's no clear path forward for the very people who need one the most? Hear what the panel had to say about the fallout. Right, so, so that, that will create a world. Yes, there's massive access to opportunity, but there are people who will take... You know, seize it and then they'll... Seize it. And, yes. and there'll be people who don't. I imagine it almost like a um, a marathon race. And AI has two superpowers. One superpower is to distract people, mm -hmm. um, such as TikTok algorithm. That's right. And the other superpower is to make you hyper creative. So you become a hyper consumer, a hyper creator. And in this marathon race, the vast majority of people have got their shoes tied together because AI is distracting them. Some people are running traditional race. Some people have got a bicycle and some people have got a Formula One mm -hmm. vehicle. And it's going to be very confronting when the results go on the scoreboard and you see, oh, wait a second, there's a few people who finished this marathon in about 30 minutes and there's a lot of us who finished 
in like 18 hours because we had our shoes tied together. And I can't understand if we've got equal opportunity why there's so much disparity between how fast it, you know, and, to, you know, I'm using an analogy, but this idea that, you know, someone, like a lot of people are going to start earning a million dollars a month and a lot of people are going to say, hey, I can't even get a job for $15 an hour. There's going to be this kind of interesting <laughs> wedge. If you think that last section was alarming, hold on. It gets even more intense. Because Brett Weinstein doesn't just warn about short-term job loss, he goes deeper, much deeper. He's not talking about a temporary shift or a market correction. He's warning about a future where billions of people may no longer have the skills or the ability to meaningfully participate in the economy at all. And if that happens, the consequences won't just be economic. They could be catastrophic for society itself. I mean, unfortunately, even if there is some small group of elites that are able to go to Hawaii while something else does the mundane details of their business building, we are rather soon going to be faced with a world that has billions of people who do not have the skills to leverage AI. Some of them will be necessary for a time. You're going to need plumbers. But this is also not a long-term solution because not only are there not enough of those jobs, um, but of course we have humanoid robots that once imbued with AI capacity will also be able to take, you know, they'll mm. be able to crawl under your house into the crawl space and fix your plumbing. So what typically happens when you have a massive economic contraction that arises from the fact that a huge number of people are out of work is that the elites start looking at those people and thinking, well, we don't really need them anyway. And so the idea that this AI disruption doesn't lead us to some very human catastrophe, I think is overly optimistic and that we need to start preparing right now. What are the rights of a person who has had whatever it is that they've invested in completely erased from the list of needs? Is that person responsible for not having anticipated AI coming? Mm. And is it their problem that, that they are now starving and they're being eyed by others as, you know, a useless eater? I don't think so. How is it different than uh, when the, uh, uh, what's it called, the, the looming machine came and the textile workers, you know, the, the result of the, and the, and the Luddite sort of revolution? Uh, how, is it, how is it different than any time in history when uh, technology uh, automated a, a lot of people out of out of jobs. I would say scale and speed. That's how it's different. Mm -hmm. And the scale good. and speed is going to result in a an unprecedented catastrophe because the rate at which people are going to be mm -hmm. simultaneously sidelined, not just in one industry, but across every industry. Let me tell you why Brett stands out in this conversation. He's one of the few voices willing to speak the brutal truth without watering it down. No vague platitudes. No recycled humans will adapt mantras. He lays it out cold. What happens when AI doesn't just replace jobs, but replaces the need for humans altogether? Now sure, if you only listen to the CEOs of big tech and AI companies, they'll tell you the same story every time. Yes, AI will eliminate some jobs, but it will create new ones too. Sounds comforting, right? But here, the catch, who says AI won't just take those new jobs next? We're not building another tool like we did during the Industrial Revolution. We're not replacing farmers with factory workers or craftsmen with machines. This is different. This time we're creating something that can think, something that can reason, create, and eventually act in the real world through robotics. For the first time ever, we're not just improving human productivity. We're building systems that might not need us at all. And if that sounds like science fiction, guess what? That future isn't light years away. In the next part of the debate, the panel divies into the truly unsettling possibilities, the ones most people are too afraid to talk about. A future where AI doesn't just reshape work, but reshapes human identity itself. We're talking about a world that starts to look eerily like the Matrix, or Ready Player One, where people retreat from reality because the virtual one is simply better. Where existence itself becomes optional, and artificial. Check it out. You know, we talked at the, about the birth rate crisis, and I think a more generalized problem there 
is creating virtualized environments uh, via VR, where everyone is living in their own created universe. And uh, it's so enticing and even creates, simulates work and simulates struggle uh, such that you don't really need to leave this this world. And so every one of us will be solipsistic, you know, similar to the Matrix. Ready Player One. Ready Player One. We're all kind of uh, plug. Even worse than a Ready Player One, at least that's a massively networked mm -hmm. environment. I'm talking about AI simulating everything uh, for us, and therefore you're literally in the Matrix, mm. you know? Maybe the, this is... I was about to say. <laughs> I had that same thought. Yeah, I've well. enjoyed this uh, great simulation. We're not just talking about minor shifts here. We are starring down the barrel of uncharted territory, mass job displacement, the erosion of meaning, and a growing number of people choosing digital escapes over reality. This isn't some distant sci-fi fantasy. This is happening now, and it's accelerating faster than most people can even process. But, and this is a big but, there's still a window open. A chance to step into the driver's seat instead of being dragged along for the ride. If you're curious, adaptable, or especially if you've got an entrepreneurial streak, this moment is tailor-made for you. As Amjad Mossad, CEO of Repli, puts it, we're still early. And that means there's still time, right now, to be one of the people building the future instead of just reacting to it. Well, first of all, the first thing you need to do, you need to understand, is that this moment of time is the least competitive uh, moment. Like, if you understand how to use these tools, you can start making money tomorrow. Like, we, we you know, I see countless examples of people making thousands of dollars with these hustles that I that I talked about, or building businesses that generates millions of dollars in the first couple of months of existence. So, I would say start moving now, start building things. So it's an unprecedented time of of, of wealth creation. Clearly, at some point. As the market gets more efficient, as people more and more people understand how to use these tools, um, there's less potential for uh, you know creating these massive businesses quickly. And we've seen this like the, the dawn of the internet or dawn of the web. You know, it was a lot easier to create Facebook than it is now. Then we had mobile, and for three, four, five years, it was uh, very easy to create massive businesses, and then it became harder. Being just at the edge of what's possible is going to be very, very important over the next couple of years. And that's that gets me really excited because the entrepreneurs who are paying attention are going to are going to be having the most amount of fun, but they're also going to be able to make a lot of money. So, yeah, we're standing at one of those rare, pivotal moments in history. Some will lose everything. Others, they'll build empires out of the chaos. It all comes down to how you choose to respond. Are we headed for collapse? a massive societal reset, or maybe something entirely new, an evolution no one saw coming. No one has a crystal ball. But what is clear? Huge change is coming. And it's coming fast. Thanks for watching. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.